What is going on guys? I'm CK and welcome back to everything Overwatch League. Eight days in now and I feel like today was the best day we've ever seen of Overwatch League. So many great matches, also two matches that went to a game five. Let's get into it. So first off, it was the LA Valiant against the London Spitfire and the Spitfire took the first two maps and I was thinking here we go again but the Valiant completely turned it around won the next two sent it to a map five which unfortunately the Spitfire just got over the line but what a big effort from the Valiant really proves that Western teams can be up there with the Korean ones. The LA Valiant don't have to convince me anymore in my mind right now they are the best Western team. Uh, the Outlaws could possibly have something to say about that but the LA Valiant's performance today just really opened my eyes at how good they are and how good they are going to be. So the team lineups today, well for the London Spitfire starting off we saw Fisher, which was the first time we'd seen him all season. It was really good to see because statistically he is such a great Winston and we saw more of that today. Uh, then Gesture came on for a couple of maps. We also saw Rascal for two maps. So. It's good that the Spitfire have started to show us more of the players that they have in their arsenal. For the Valiant, it was more of the same. Their usual roster, Agilities and Silk Thread subbing out for each other. We actually saw a bit more of Agilities today and he completely carried on Oasis to win that one and turn the series around on Roadhog. He played so well today. It was probably his best game yet as well. So the MVP of the match was Fury, who is obviously London's D.Va player, their flex tank. He is a very, very good player. I thought it could have either gone to him today or actually Bedosin, who I think is quite an underrated player on this Spitfire team, just because they've got so many stars. But it's easy to uh, not notice Bedosin. But if you look at the kill feed, he actually just participates so many kills each fight, headshots, unbelievable has really good transcendences as well and at stages today he also played moira lucio and sombra but the play of the series today actually came from birdring who also had a great match and he carried this last point on the fifth map make sure he stays in step of the valiant and has a sight line on all the agilities he cannot be doing that's too risky up in the air he pops and come, oh. Oh, down he comes there as well. Look at that. Unko tries to go for the resurrect. Birdring is controlling this match. The Genji switch has not been enough to deal with it, but he killed it another time. There's just no opportunity for the Valiant to get involved here. Birdring is deciding who does what, where, when, how, and why. Kills Agilities and then the Valking Mercy and then Agilities again and completely clutches that last round on Garden for them. If he hadn't popped off there, then Valiant might as well have won that fight. They had Valk, they had a lot of other ultimates. What a play. So lastly, what did we learn from this series? Well, I learned a couple of things. One, that the Valiant are probably the best Western team at the moment. I mean, challenging one of the world-class Korean teams like that, that is a huge, huge effort. I think they, they are a very scary team going forward and they're only getting better. Don't forget, they've also got space coming in for stage two, I believe who of course is a very, very good diva, known for getting big self-destruct kills as well. And for the Spitfire, uh, I, I now think that they're probably the weakest of the three Korean teams, Seoul, New York, and London, um, because obviously the Valiant lost 3-0 to NYXL earlier in the week, and the Spitfire, I mean, they, they looked very vulnerable here. I do think they'd probably lose to Seoul or NYXL, and I kind of feel like NYXL might even be the best team at the moment. Of course, of day three next week, the first match of the day is Seoul versus New York, so that is going to be possibly the biggest match of the season so far. Going to be some high-level Overwatch. I can't wait for that one. And for the Valiant Spitfire today, I actually predicted a 4-0 to London. It was a lot closer than that, but still the victory to the Spitfire. So that puts my total predictions now at 7-3. So the next match of the day was the New York Excelsior against the LA Gladiators. And the Gladiators put up a nice effort, but it, it just wasn't enough against a New York team that are looking so, so strong at the moment. 
For the first time ever in the regular season, we saw Pine as a starter for NYXL, which made everyone happy. He had a, a few very good shots on Widow, on Dorado, and then he was subbed off for the second map, came back on for the control map, and then subbed off for the last map. It was good to see him being played more. Obviously a very good player. They were looking to shut him down a lot. And then the, just the usual rotations for New York, Janus and Mano swapping a little bit. Of course, Pine swapping with Sabiolbi. For the Gladiators, it was just the usual business. Their three DPS players, Shaw 4, Hydration, and Asha, swapping it around a bit. We actually only saw Asha for one map today, I believe, uh, where he played. He played well, but it wasn't enough. The player of the series today was actually Miko again. Now, he actually got player of the series last uh, time NYXL played. He's, of course, their flex tank player. I thought he played very well today. I'm not sure if you would have picked him over someone like Ark or Libero. I think Libero, uh, it was his best game he's played yet today. His Farah looked very good and dominated Oasis. But Miko also played very well, deserved it once again. A very, very good diva, and his Hog is also very good. Libero actually had play of the series today as well. It was a sick Farah play to win Oasis for them. Gladiators nearly swapping that point back. New York needs to keep people on there. OT ticking away. Now Gladiators, desperation mode. Libero with the barrage. Two already, make it three. That may be enough. And there goes the overtime. NYXL. Concussive blast the soldier into him and then proceeded to barrage, picked up three and secured Oasis for them. What a play. So what did we learn from this match today? Well, honestly, I didn't really change my opinion of the Gladiators before or after the match. They played well against a New York team that's just too strong at the moment. Uh, I think they're still a, a mid-tier, kind of pushing for top of the mid-tier range for the Gladiators. They're, they're a solid team for sure. Next week, they've got some tough matches, though, against the Philadelphia Fusion and the Houston Outlaws. So those are going to be some good matches as well. And NYXL, obviously, they're playing the Philadelphia Fusion on day two next week. And then, of course, the big one, like I said before, Seoul Dynasty, first match of day three. I believe these are our two strongest teams at the moment. I think NYXL is stronger than London Spitfire. So that is going to be such a massive match. That is really going to set the tone for the season. So this Gladiators New York match wasn't too hard to predict. Uh, that means I go up in my predictions 8 and 3. Now the last match of week 2 of the Overwatch League was arguably, and I would say it's the best match we've ever seen so far in the Overwatch League. Incredible match between the Boston Uprising and the San Francisco Shock. Boston were the clear favourites going into this, but SF Shock completely surprised everyone today, or me at least. This was their best performance by far. Their team synergy looked a lot better. Individual players stepping up. Really took it to the uprising and ended up taking the series in a map 5, 3-2. If you haven't seen this one, go and watch the VOD right now. I was on the edge of my seat the whole match. So despite Boston being an 11-man roster, once again, we didn't see any swaps from them today. They might have wanted to swap something. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure how it all works down there, but they need to start incorporating the players that they have stocked up who we haven't even seen yet. And for the SF Shock, obviously a seven-man roster at the moment until their other two players come back. But IDD QD, we haven't seen him all season. Uh, they, they played well today, so not sure uh, how good he is, where he fits into the team, if he's better than Dante or Baby Bay, we'll see. The player of the series today went to Dante, who did play very well. He clutched it on the last map on Tracer, but I'd, I probably would have given it to Baby Bay personally myself. I think he had a more consistent effort throughout each map, and this was the most I've ever seen Baby Bay pop off. It was easily his best performance by far today, really hitting all those Widowmaker shots, and his Genji looked a lot more polished. But not taking anything away from Dante, he also played exceptionally well today, especially clutching it on the last map. And just before we go into the play of the series, just a quick point. 
Because we saw two control maps today, we saw a lot more Lucio, and both of these teams actually looked a lot better uh, on Lucio. Nico showed himself to be a good Lucio player. Of course, we know what Dak can do on Lucio from the past. So that was a good thing for both of these teams. It was good to see a more Lucio being played. The play of the series today was actually from Kalios, a nice two-man diva bomb, but I'll explain why it was so big afterwards. Has his grappling hook off corner, he can use it. As he gets knocked around now, the primal rage of the winds is not enough to force it out of him, but this could be nasty. Self-destructed, Dak and Baby Bay both down, and this could be the opening the uprising are looking for. It's so hard, Matt, to escape the self-destructs on that bridge. So there, San Francisco, the Mercy and the Widowmaker got killed. Now, Dak was almost at Valkyrie, and Sleepy had Transcendence, and Baby Bay, well, he was hitting shots. So those were two huge kills that really changed the momentum, and if he hadn't picked up that big Diva Bomb, then they might have lost that fight and actually lost that whole map. That changed everything. So what did we learn today, and what can we take away from this? Well, for the shock. This was the best they've ever played. I think they've been consistently getting better each match that we've seen them play. Their individual players stepped up today. Their team synergy was on point. They were peeling for each other well. It was really great to see. They've just got to keep grinding. It's good that they're improving with the players they have now. And obviously when Super and Sinatra come back, that's going to be huge for them. Uh, they're playing London Spitfire first off next week. That'll probably be a rough match. And then a big match against Dallas Fuel later in the week. Honestly, you don't really know what to expect from that one because Dallas Fuel could be really good or they could be bad. Who knows what can happen, but a bright future for the Shock nevertheless. Now for Boston Uprising, that's a bad loss for them today. They would have wanted to win this one, but I don't think it means too much. I still think they're a very good team with a lot of potential. They've actually got a, the same schedule as the Shock next week, so they play the Spitfire and then the Dallas Fuel, so could get slammed by the Spitfire. Unpredictable against the Fuel, but they just need to keep doing their thing, and I want to see more players come out for them. They've got the, more, they've got the extra players, so start playing them. Start seeing what they can do. I predicted Boston for this match, so that sets my total predictions for the week to 8 and 4. That's okay. Next week, I'm going to be predicting them at the end of every day instead of doing each prediction at the start of the week, so that'll hopefully be a bit better. So, overall, guys, another week of Overwatch League over. I think it was super successful once again. It's starting to get a bit more normal, everything. People are starting to get into the regular routine the teams are starting to realize that they're in this for the long haul. It's feeling like an actual sport. It's really exciting. It's exciting that we've now got enough stats to be able to learn things and that the, the, that the ladder is taking shape. Uh, the Overwatch League is in a really good spot at the moment and I'm excited. But that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you also enjoyed this week of Overwatch League. Uh, I will either see you guys tomorrow or the next day, depending on if there's news or not. But thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being part of this wonderful community. It's honestly so nice. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next one. And remember, the world could always use more heroes.